Okay, we're going to be covering um, a couple of sections here today, 10.1, um, 10.3, 10 10.4, and a couple um, different of screencasts. Um, so 10.1 is first to come with um, cell growth, division, and reproduction. Um, so we're going to talk about limits of cell size, like why can't a cell just grow, um, in, you know, like really large, there's a limit, why is there a limit? Um, so the larger a cell becomes, the more demands the cell places on its DNA. In addition, a large cell is less efficient in moving nutrients and waste materials across the cell membrane. So we're going to discuss those th um, things in more detail right now. Um, so information overload. So living cells store critical information in DNA, uh, deoxyribonucleic acid, which we'll talk about more later on in this unit. As a cell grows, that information is used to build the molecules needed to for cell growth. So DNA carries your genetic information to make everything that's in you. Um, as size increases, the demands on that information grow as well. If a cell were to grow without limit, an information crisis would occur. So for example, if a growing cell was like a growing town, the town library has a limited number of books. As the town grows, these limited number of books are in greater demand, which limits the access to that information. So a growing cell makes a greater demand on its genetic library, quote unquote. So if the cell gets too big, the DNA would not be able to serve the needs of the growing cell. So there wouldn't be enough um, probably genetic information to go around to make everything that growing cell would need. Um, also, the idea of exchanging materials in and out of the cell. Um, food, oxygen, and water enter a cell through the cell membrane. Um, waste products leave in the same way. So the rate at which the exchange takes place would um, depend on the surface area of a cell. The rate at which food and oxygen are used up and waste materials are, um, are produced also depends on the cell's volume. So the ratio of surface area to volume is a key thing to understand why a cell must divide as they grow. Like why couldn't they just get um, really big? It's all based on the surface area to volume ratio to kind of get a better aspect of what this means. Um, so imagine just basically a cell is like shaped like a cube because it's easy to calculate um, surface area and volume with a cube. Um, as the length of the sides of a cube increases, its volume increases faster than its surface area, decreasing the ratio of surface area to volume. So if a cell gets too large, um, like this one here, the surface area of the cell is not large enough to get enough of the oxygen, nutrients, and waste in and out. So for example, the small cube here, a one centimeter side cube, taking the surface area, you multiply length times width times height, you get six centimeter. This is um, yeah, I'm sorry. One, you do um, one length times width times the number of sides. So one times one times six, you get six centimeters um, squared. So that's surface area volume, um, one centimeter cubed. Um, so if you do the surface area to volume ratio, six divided by one, you get a six to one ratio. Um, if we go to the extreme, the other one, the large one, um, if you take the surface area three times three times the six sides, you get 54 centimeters squared. If you take the volume three cubed, you get 27 centimeters cubed. If you divide the surface area by the volume, you get a two to one ratio. So when you have a smaller surface area to volume ratio, your cell is more is less efficient than the smaller one. So you want a bigger surface area to volume ratio difference um, between the surface area and the volume. That's a more efficient cell. You have more surface area to exchange um, nutrients in and out um, with the volume compared to the large cell. So the synonymous to like traffic problems in a town. So to use a town analogy again, as a town grows, more and more traffic clogs the main street. It becomes difficult to get information across town and goods in and out. So similarly, a cell that continues to grow will would experience traffic problems. If the cell got too large, it would be more difficult to get oxygen and nutrients in and out. So it would be kind of like a traffic jam. Um, so looking at what, so now the cell would need to divide to kind of keep this uh, a nice surface area, a large surface area to volume ratio difference. Um, so before a cell grows too large, it divides into two new daughter cells in a process called cell division. So before cell division, the cell copies all of its DNA because it's going to need to give the new cell the same you know, DNA information. It then divides into daughter cells. Each daughter cell receives a complete set of DNA. 
Cell division reduces cell volume, um, so which is a good thing. It also results in an increased ratio of surface area to volume for each daughter cell, which is also a good thing. It makes your cell more efficient. Okay, so looking more into depth here about cell division reproduction. So we're going to be comparing sexual and asexual reproduction. Um, we'll talk more in depth right now or in a bit, but gen um, when you're producing genetically identical offspring from a single parent, that's asexual reproduction. So the prefix a means like not or without. So asexual reproduction means without sexual reproduction. Um, when you're producing um, genetic information from each parent and create offspring that's genetically different from their parents, that is sexual reproduction. So asexual reproduction in multicellular organisms, cell division leads to growth. It also enables an organism to repair and maintain its body. So um, we, for example, your skin cells, you're constantly needing to cre um, create more skin cells. Those are, um, they wear off very, more, more quickly than cells you have um, in other parts of your body. So those types of cells go through asexual um, reproduction quite frequently. In single cell organisms, cell division is a form of actual like reproduction. So asexual reproduction is a rep reproduction that involves a single parent, again, producing an offspring. The offspring produced here, or the offspring produced are in most cases genetically identical, so like a clone copy, to the single cell organism that produced them. Asexual reproduction is a simple, efficient, and effective way for an organism to produce a large number of offspring. Um, both prokaryotic and eukaryotic single cell organisms and many multicellular organisms actually do reproduce asexually. So for example, bacteria, um, prokaryotes here, reproduce by binary fission. So we see one cell copies DNA, splits into two. And we have two exact um, copies of the parent um, bacterium here. Um, a multicellular or organism called a hydra that um, reproduces and makes offspring by budding. So this little bud here is an exact copy of this parent hydra here. Sexual reproduction is offspring are produced by the fusion of two sex cells, one from each parent, um, like an oocyte from a female and a sperm from a male. These fuse into a single cell before the offspring can grow. Um, the offspring produced inherit some genetic information from both parents. So they combine genetic information from both parents, creating a new um, genetic um, combination of offspring. Most animals and plants and many single cell organisms produce sexually. So comparing asexual and sexual, asexual, genetically identical, sexual, genetically different. Um, asexual reproduce very quick, large numbers. Sexual, um, for it kind of um, the genetic diversity or differences helps ensure the survival of the species when there's some sort of environmental change, like maybe an epidemic um, of some sort of like virus. Okay, we're going to continue now with 10.3. We're going to be covering 10.2 mitosis in class, so um, I'm not going to make you take notes again on that. So 10.3, regulating the cell cycle. So how is the cell cycle regulated? Um, we're going to be talking about how the cell cycle is controlled by regula regulatory proteins, both inside and outside the cell. Um, so the controls on the cell growth and division can be turned on and off. Um, which is a good thing. Um, so for example, when an injury such as a broken bone, I have it right here, um, occurs, cells are stimulated to divide rapidly and to start healing the process. The rate at, of cell division slows when the healing process nears completion. Um, there are things called cyclins. Cyclins are a family of proteins that regulate the timing of the cell cycle in eukaryotic cells. Um, this graph shows how cyclin levels change throughout the cell cycle and a fertilized clam egg. So we have an increase during mitosis and then it slows down during interphase and um, like the G um, portions of the cell cycle. Um, so they go, they increase rapidly during mitosis when actual um, cell division is occurring. Internal regulators are proteins that respond to events inside, hence why they're called internal. They allow the cell cycle to proceed only once certain, um, certain processes have happened inside the cell. That's a good thing. You don't want uncontrolled cell growth. We're going to talk about later that that's cancer. So we want it to be able to um, only happen when certain process happens where, where we need cell growth to happen. Um, 
External regulators are proteins that respond to events outside the cell. They direct cells to speed up or slow down the cell cycle. And then also growth factors are external regulators that stimulate the growth and division of cells. They are important during embryonic development and wound healing. So apoptosis is a, pro is a process of um, programmed cell death. Um, so apoptosis plays a role in development by shaping the structures of tissues and organs in plants and animals. So for example, the foot of a mouse is shaped the way it is partially because toes undergo apoptosis during tissue development. So to kind of get more in depth, like with humans, um, in utero, fe fetus ha um, fetuses will have webbed fingers and apoptosis is in charge of, um, kill, you know, programming cell death of the like webbed cells. So if that doesn't happen properly, then um, a child can be born with like webbed fingers like this one right here. So just these, the skin cells here, for some reason, in fetal development did not undergo apoptosis. Um, so how this relates to cancer, cancer is uncontrolled cell growth. So um, cancer cells do not respond, it's when they, cancer cells are cells that do not respond to signals that regulate the growth of most cells. As a result, the cells divide uncontrollably, like they don't undergo apoptosis when they should. Um, cancer is a disorder in which potty cells lose the ability to control cell growth. So they can grow uncontrollably um, and can spread. So cancer cells divide uncontrollably to form a mass of cells called a tumor. There's two basic types of tumors. There's a benign um, tumor, which is non-cancerous. I always think like in Spanish, like bueno starts with B. So a benign tumor technically is like a compared to the, a malignant tumor, a good tumor. Um, it doesn't spread to other tissues. So here this tumor here, it's not spreading um, into the bloodstream to go to another area, it's staying in its spots, so that'd be a benign tumor. A malignant tumor, like in Spanish, the prefix mal means bad, or like mal means bad. Um, so the malignant tumor is a cancerous tumor. It invades and destroys surrounding t healthy tissue and can spread to other parts of the body. This process is called metastasis. Um, cancer cells absorb nutrients needed by other cells block nerve connections and prevent organs from functioning properly. So cancers are caused by defects in genes that regulate cell growth and division. So some sources of gene defects are like smoking, tobacco, radiation exposure, like UV radiation from the sun, um, obviously like, you know, like x-rays, long exposure to x-rays, um, defective genes and viral infections, um, like human papillomavirus with um, cervical cancer. Um, a damaged or defective p53 gene is common in cancer cells. There's a gene called p53 for regulating cell cycles and cell growth. Um, it causes cells to lose the information needed to respond to growth um, signals. Um, treatments for cancer, some are localized tumors, can be removed by surgery that haven't spread. Um, many tumors can be treated with targeted radiation to kill those um, rapidly um, dividing cancer, or dividing cells. Chemotherapy is used for compounds to kill or slow growth of cancer cells. So chemotherapy and radiation, um, they, they target any, you know, pretty much any cell that grows rapidly. So that's why you lose your hair when you're undergoing like chemotherapy or radiation um, because your ha hair cells are, are rapidly growing. So they get kind of, they get accidentally targeted because they, um, sort of mimic the same kind of characteristics that a cancer cell has. Okay, we'll continue on to the next screencast with the last section, 10.4. Um, okay, bye.